Spurs. Please, Joe, don't get loose started on me being gay. Not with the mood he's in tonight. Hey, I don't care no more. You don't care if I'm gay? Look, from now on, the only thing I worry about is myself. Like I told little Luella tonight. Hey, look, your homework is your own business. Now stick that to the refrigerator with a magnet. <laughs> All right, Luke, that's too much. The other night, I thought you had to get something out of your system with those bums, but now you're worse than they are. Did you actually treat your workers like that today? Why not? I'm the foreman. Lou, I've seen you work two days on the line for old man Sweeney when his back was hurt. A and then you covered it up so we got paid. You're right. Well, let me speak to Sweeney. Well, stick your head in the oxygen tent and tell him Lou wants to talk to him. Because <laughs> he owes me 300 bucks. And hurry up, there. Well, come down there and kick a plug right out of its socket. <laughs> we'll go get your mother. And stop blubbering for Pete's sake, Clancy. You're five years old. You're not some baby. <laughs> he hung up on me. Huh. Lou, for God's sake, you're not going down there, are you? No, I think I made my point. I'm gonna go out now and have some fun. Maybe squash some bugs. <laughs> Hello, Hobnobbers. Hey, Donald. Ooh, I got your message at work. What's the poop? Look, Lou's gonna be here any minute. Oh, thanks for the warning. Bye. Donald, Donald! <laughs> Donald, we have got to put a stop to the way Lou is acting right now. He is getting worse and worse. That's metaphysically impossible. <laughs> oh, yeah? Last night, he skinny-dipped in the reflecting pool at St. Mary's Convent. <laughs> well, maybe now they'll change their minds about birth control. <laughs> McDonald, last week you told Lou to do something for himself. Now you gotta explain what you really meant. Hey, hey, hey! You! You pinched me yesterday. Get out! No. I said get out! And I said no. Kelly, Kelly, I invited Lou here. If he stays, I go. I have my honor and I have my dignity. Kelly, please. All right, but I want to raise. <laughs> You would use a situation like this to get more money out of me? I would use a heated coat hanger. Fine, we'll talk. Welcome aboard, Lou. <laughs> Lou, we want to talk to you. Yeah, I know. Uh, I would have been here earlier, but I was working the uh, Rhino Lodge Orphan Fundraiser. What'd you do, sell them into white slavery? <laughs> Look, Lou, all we want to say in the nicest possible way is that you've been acting like a pig. <laughs> Jablowski said the same thing at work today. Jablowski, I thought you fired him. I did, but I hired him back today. You mean you did something nice? Of course. I also dropped another hammer on his hand, but in a cute way. <laughs> and you really were at an orphan fundraiser? Sure. Right after I stopped by the Sweeney's there and uh, apologized. You mean you're not going to be mean and nasty anymore? No. Good. You're finally starting to regret the way you acted. No, it was great. Well, I don't understand. Well, you see, I just had something in my system there that I had to get out. See, everybody's got a selfish side. But all my life, I always thought about other people first. So whenever I'd done something rude or callous there, it was an accident, so I could never really enjoy it. So the one thing in your life you did for yourself was to become an overbearing jerk? <laughs> No wonder the transition was so smooth. <laughs> exactly. And now that I've seen what being selfish is really like, I realize how much I like doing stuff for other people. And when I almost died, that stuff that flashed before my eyes, that was my life. And it's a pretty damn good one. In a crazy way, it makes sense. I mean, you can't really know who you are until you have something to measure against. You said it. <laughs> See, now I know I ain't a fag. <laughs> Thank 